Martinez is a San Francisco native with 32 years experience as an AIDS counselor and group facilitator. Alex, take it away. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, uh, I've done performances before, but I have to say that this one, I really pulled out of way in here, so I'm gonna ask that we hold each other through this, okay? <laughs> All right. Okay, so hit it. Socrates said, to fear death is to think yourself wise when you're not. To fear something you think you know, but you don't. Nobody knows if death may not be the greatest of blessings, yet Humans fear it like it's the worst of all evils. In my early 20s, I had a dream about Robbie. He had been my best friend when we were in grammar school, and we had stayed in touch past high school, but I hadn't heard from him. So I called his mother, and she told me that he had died. And at that moment, I thought to myself, well, that kind of makes sense. I already knew way too much about AIDS. By 1987, AIDS was a plague in my community. My coworkers, my doctor, my therapist, my friends, my boyfriends, and my partners would be taken. I didn't know what to do, so I took all my fears and I went to the Shanti Project to become an emotional support counselor for people with AIDS. Um, this is me at the time. Next time I'm doing fear of hair loss. <laughs> there were 70 people in the training with 25 facilitators. The first thing we did was stand up and say why we were there and what was our greatest fear, which for most of us was being in that room. Um, uh, uh, the first thing we did was an eye exercise where we looked directly into the eyes of another student and we were directed to see the child in that person. We moved to the next person and saw the warrior in them, moved to the next and saw the gentle heart. It was the first time in my life that I felt bonded with an entire crowd of people. We did a feeding exercise where we practiced feeding our client who couldn't feed themselves anymore. We were surprised when we were instructed to, to imagine that our client was in their final stages and we had to practice saying goodbye to them. I had no idea how that would apply in my real life except when my client Martin was dying and I said goodbye to him and he thanked me for the time that I had spent with him. When I said goodbye to my boyfriend Greg, he said that I gave him peace. And when my husband of 25 years was right before he, the last time he had consciousness, he blew me a kiss. How lucky am I? The group, that we had to have a support group every day to get through the training. It was led by two facilitators and it was a place where we could cry and we could laugh and we learned what it was to get support and to give support. One of the facilitators of the support group, his name was Jim, and he had to wear loose clothing because his entire body, face and down to his feet were covered in Carposi sarcoma cancer lesions. They hadn't spread to his internal organs yet. In six months, he'd be on the memorial table, and he was there to support us. In one of the support groups, uh, 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 one of his lesions on his legs burst and blood splattered. This was at a time when AIDS blood was considered the most fearful contagion, something to be reviled. But when that happened, I felt that I wanted to embrace him and comfort him and everything that he symbolized. Um, the, the, ironically, and this might be bananas, but in that environment, sex was so acute and it was something that was celebrated and embraced because in the face of mortality, sex was the fire of life that we could cling on to. There's more. Uh, we learned about dementia, we learned about uh, 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 suicide, depression, uh, infect, uh, opportunistic infections, disease progression. We were all just ordinary people, but we were learning all this really quickly, and most of all, we were going on a deep inner journey. A guy goes to his doctor, and the doctor says, I have, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have a fatal incurable disease. And the guy says, oh my god, how much time do I have? And the doctor says, 10. And the guy says, oh my god, 10 years? And the doctor says, 10. And he says, 10 months, 10 weeks? And the doctor says, 10. Nine, eight, seven. <laughs> now it was time for grief circle. The grief circle was the only place in the 
the only part of the training that was open to the community uh, because it was the only place where people could come and express their grief about their age losses. Um, uh, 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 there was a, 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 the wail of a mother who had lost her child, the, the cry of a, of a man whose partner's family had shut him legally out of the ho hospital room, that anguish of physical pain. It was one thing after another and the air was filled with grief. We laughed through our tears when a man talked about the dementia that his, uh, that his partner had been diagnosed with. One morning, the partner woke up and said, oh, thanks for putting a nightlight in the bathroom last night. And the partner said, I didn't put a light in the bathroom. Turns out that he had peed in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> The, 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 the clinical psychologist on staff, her name was Gail Winston, and she saw every depressed, suicidal, and overwhelmed client, and of course, she watched them all die. So she used the grief circle to express her anger and her rage until she was screaming, I hate this fucking disease! I sat in my chair and I was overwhelmed and squeezed of all emotion. I felt that I was too young and AIDS was too big, and yet I was in the middle of it and feeling it all. We all stood up and we held hands. Then, one by one, the first person was rolled into the next person and the next person until we were coiled into a giant ball of humanity. Uh, uh, we, a chime was rung to remind us to let go to breathe, and my feet were lifted into the ball of humanity in the most incredible embrace. We're all going to die. So for all of those before us, and all of those after us, and all of us here now alive, 